What's up everybody, John the Morgyle here, checking in for a new Flat Earth video for you. I hope you do enjoy it today. Today's video is going to be in regards to acceleration and inertia. When it comes to geological axial rotation and orbital motion, the spinning ball Earth is a unique physical enigma for it shows all the signs of a perfectly stationary body and it is inarguably a fixed frame of reference. This point isn't even debated by the globetards who believe the world to be in perpetual motion through space along multiple curvilinear paths. While it is claimed to be spinning upon its axis, which is said to be tilted from perpendicular to the direction of travel or to the ecliptic plane, it somehow behaves as a fixed frame of reference, a unique attribute for a body in motion. While it is spinning, it is also supposedly traveling along a curved path, faster than anything we could possibly compare it to or even conceptualize in our imagination. It experiences no measurable centrifugal forces or acceleration. Now this is quite unique in all of reality as any other object in a similar motion would exhibit certain portents of rotational and orbital motion. When spinning on an axis and hauling all ass along an orbital trajectory around the sun, upon the so-called ecliptic plane, at 6,600 miles an hour. Now this is not the only supposed motion allegedly experienced by the spinning ball Earth. Far from it. There are two other mind-bendingly fast velocities attributed to the ball Earth. Specifically, the solar frame of reference, where the Sun is claimed to drag the Earth along with it around the galactic center at around oh, half a million miles per hour, along a trajectory which is 60 degrees misaligned to the Earth's path around the Sun, by the way, and also, finally, the galactic frame of reference, where the galaxy is dragging the Sun and all the other stars uh, in the galaxy through the cosmos around the great attractor at several millions of miles per hour. Now, we cannot simply ignore these completely unimaginable velocities in terms of the solar and galactic frames of reference. A half a million miles per hour, the solar frame of reference, is so much faster than anything we will ever dream of interacting with in reality, it is simply not possible to draw any sort of comparison which adequately encapsulates and relays such speeds in terms which we little tiny humans could fully grasp, not in a million years. For the purposes of brevity, we will henceforth mostly ignore the solar and galactic frames of reference. However, please try to keep in the back of your mind that the same points raised regarding the Earth's orbital trajectory, which are raised in this video, uh, must also be applied to the subsequent far greater velocities attributed to the solar and galactic reference frames. These trajectories are so far beyond anything practically relatable in human terms, however, they should leave traces of physical evidence upon the physical world which we little humans should be able to observe, measure, and document. Of course, there is exactly zero physical evidence to support any of this motion. In this video, we're going to, again, for the most part, ignore these velocities, focusing strictly on the alleged geological axial rotation and the Earth's orbital motion around the Sun, which are sufficient to demonstrate the important premises germane to the overall points being made in this video. Specifically, that the world is not a spinning sphere hauling ass through the cosmos. So, the alleged geological orbital velocity, 6,600 miles an hour, as stated, even this relatively dwarf frame of reference is so far beyond anything remotely relatable in human terms, I can only try to illustrate such a velocity's incomprehensibility. We're talking about 86 times the speed of sound. Now, our fastest military jets 
reportedly travel at about 3,000 miles per hour, and that's being very generous. So the Earth supposedly orbits around the Sun more than 20 times faster than the fastest military jets. Since most people have never been in such jets, we can put it to you this way. It is allegedly, that is the Earth, is allegedly traveling over a hundred times faster than a typical uh, commercial airliner and over a thousand times faster than a car cruising down the highway at about 65. We're talking about over 18 miles per second. That means it would take less than three minutes to travel from New York to LA and about five minutes to travel from Kansas to China. This velocity attributed to the Earth is 65 times faster than a speeding bullet from a high-powered rifle. Uh, during his lifetime, my grandfather estimated that he drove about a million miles by the time he was in his 80s. Were he traveling as fast as the Earth during all those trips over the course of his entire life, it would take about 15 hours instead of the better part of 70 years. Such a speed is so far beyond the scope of anything that one could ever hope to experience, it is simply beyond the pale of relatability and remains beyond our capacity as little humans to even grasp. It is simply not possible to describe such speeds in terms which we can fully appreciate, and yet, every second of every day, we've been allegedly riding on spaceship Earth, which uniquely fails to leave even a single trace of evidence of this non-stop motion. As stated previously, instead of behaving as, well, all other objects in reality behave when they're in motion, the spinning ball Earth somehow escapes the effects of inertia. It simply ignores certain immutable laws of physics which should certainly apply to the world, but somehow magically cease to apply to the spinning ball Earth which manages to elude the laws of inertia. We are told by the pontificates of scientism that while the Earth is indeed in motion around the Sun, spinning on its axis, we don't notice this motion because, well, we're attached to the Earth's reference frame as it travels at a consistent speed along its orbital path. And since we only notice acceleration and not straight line path motion, it's perfectly normal that we don't notice the motion of the Earth around the Sun. Uh, this is, of course, ridiculous and for several obvious reasons. For one, the Earth's orbital trajectory experiences four distinctly different phases. That would be aphelion, perihelion, and the two phases leading up to and moving away from these two phases. Uh, this would make the alleged orbital trajectory appear as an oblong path around the Sun. The only possible way that the Earth could travel at a perfectly consistent speed around the Sun in an oblong path would be if the Sun was stationary, and furthermore, to escape periods of acceleration and deceleration, the Earth's orbital trajectory would need to be circular. During the aphelion phase of the Earth's orbit, the Earth is at its furthest point from the Sun during a given year, allegedly. During the perihelion, the Earth is claimed to be at its nearest point to the Sun, and the other two points in between these two phases should be times of great acceleration. Uh, this is owing to the claim that the Sun hauls donkeys around the galactic center at about 485,000 miles per hour, allegedly. So, during the three-month period leading up to perihelion, the Earth would need to catch up with and surpass the Sun in its 485,000 mile per hour trajectory. So it needs to travel at 485,000 miles per hour plus 66,600 miles per hour to maintain its consistent relative speed according to the Sun's reference frame. Then, during the three-month period leading up to the aphelion, the Earth would need to essentially stand still or even retrograde to ensure that its speed relative to the Sun remains a consistent 66,600 miles per hour according to the Sun's frame of reference. All of this boils down to one simple fact, really an elephant in the living room. The Earth's orbital velocity is anything but consistent. And this is according to the very heliocentric theory. 
Since it is allegedly maintaining a consistent speed relative to the sun, it would need to physically accelerate at times and decelerate at other times depending on its direction of travel relative to the direction of travel of the sun. And the evidence for this orbital acceleration? Crickets. There has never been a shred of physical evidence anywhere ever to support the heliocentric theory, specifically in terms of the necessary acceleration which the Earth would need to undergo in order to maintain a consistent speed relative to the Sun as it is in motion around the galactic center, allegedly. Again, the Sun's orbital trajectory around the galaxy is alleged to be set at a 60 degree angle to the ecliptic plane which this actually complicates this whole thing as it adds yet another dimension of travel which would be in constant phase shift of the Earth's trajectory relative to that path. Uh, furthermore, we should see evidence of angular acceleration all the time due to the elliptical nature of the Earth's orbital trajectory. So we're not talking about a straight line path and we're also not talking about a perfectly circular path either. Whenever an object travels along a curved linear path, it experiences what's called angular acceleration due to the physical laws of inertia. And this angular acceleration manifests in the physical world as a centrifugal force, which is measurable. If you're in a car that's traveling at a consistent speed along a road that cur curves towards the right, your body will lean left due to these very same laws of inertia. What's more is the Earth's orbital trajectory isn't described as perfectly circular as stated, instead it is claimed to be an oblong or elliptical path with periods of varying distance to the Sun and with varying degrees of curvature of this orbital path during aphelion and perihelion. And the physical evidence supporting these claims? Crickets! The Earth's orbital velocity is anything but consistent and the world should experience periods of drastic acceleration, deceleration, and changes in its trajectory. The claim that we cannot observe or measure geological motion due to the lack of acceleration is quite simply put, absurd. This is asinine. There's simply no reason that we should not find a single shred of evidence to support the theory that the world is orbiting the sun. Except, of course, the fact that the world is at rest. This is the only explanation that makes any sense. The world is perfectly at rest, without moving at all, ever. The sun is merely a light in the sky, just as the moon is, and while it is a mystery in terms of the exact makeup of the sun, we know for certain, absolutely for certain, that it is a secondary feature supported above and by the great static plane Earth and the sun is not a dominant host far larger supporting the world. This is all bass backwards, as it were. The earth is a perfectly fixed frame of reference. This fact again is not argued by the globe earth proponents. There has never been nor will there ever be any indicator of geological acceleration or motion quite simply because the earth is in fact at rest. And there's even more evidence which disproves the heliocentric or standard theory. Uh, since we little observers aboard spaceship Earth are allegedly spinning around the face of the Earth faster than the speed of sound no less, we should experience a phase shift in our inertial reference frame completing one cycle of every 24 hours. In the morning, when the sun is rising, we should be essentially standing upon the nose of a speeding bullet. About 12 hours later, we should be standing upon the tail of the same speeding bullet Earth. Only the speeding bullet Earth is traveling at over 60,000 miles an hour, far, far faster than any high-powered rifle could ever hope to achieve. Over the course of every single day, we should experience an acceleration of over 133,000 miles per hour from sunrise to sunset. The world's reference frame should shift between racing up towards our feet in the morning and all the way to the opposite phase, down and away from our feet in the evening at sunset. And the physical evidence to support this part of the theory. You guessed it, crickets. 
there simply is no physical evidence to support the notion that our world is in constant motion along a curved linear orbital path whilst spinning around like a dreidel on its axis. Such a blatant lack of physical evidence, zero evidence for physical acceleration and zero evidence for angular acceleration, is certainly sufficient to convince a pack of gullible toddlers that the world is a spinning ball in space, but rational adults, skeptically and critically revisiting this topic with a newly found degree of discernment? Certainly not. We simply refuse to accept the argument that we don't notice the Earth's motion due to the lack of acceleration as absurd, since acceleration should necessarily be built in to a spinning and orbiting body as the Earth is claimed to be by Team Globetard. All of this motion should, of course, be exacerbated by the claim that the Sun, the center point of our alleged orbital trajectory, is also in motion around the galactic center, and furthermore the galaxy being in motion through the cosmos around the so-called Great Attractor. The only possible way that the world can behave as a perfectly fixed frame of reference is if the world is actually perfectly fixed and at rest. This may sound like a bold and ridiculous claim, but this is the claim which is supported by all physical evidence one can find in this place that we call reality. The physical evidence proves that the world is at rest. Only the heliocentric theory would have us believe that the spinning ball Earth is somehow exempt from the physical laws of inertia, which are immutable physical laws of nature which can never be avoided or skirted by any object in motion except for the spinning ball Earth. Personally, I find it quite obvious that the world is at rest after being involved in this thing for five or six years now, and anyone who believes they are spinning around in space has been completely brainwashed and snowed into subscribing to a theory which is simply not supported by any physical evidence. Will you follow the evidence, or will you follow the propaganda involving infinite space and terra firma spheres flying around unaffected by the universal laws of physics and inertia? There are fundamental differences between a body in motion and a body at rest. Were the Earth indeed in motion, there should be telltale signatures exhibited by all bodies in motion. This utter lack of any evidence is staggering, and once we are presented with these facts as rational, skeptical adults, it leaves us with only one possible conclusion. The Earth is stationary, kids, and it is, in fact, a plane. No curvature to speak of, no acceleration, no centrifugal forces ever recorded or documented or observed. Globe Earthers believe this nonsense due to the fact that they were convinced of it during their formative years as well, when they were little kids too. The topic is never rationally or skeptically revisited during the more advanced ventures into the topic of orbital mechanics when we're in higher levels of education. It is instead further cemented into the adult's id as fact without any sort of skeptical or critical thought involved with the curriculum. It simply goes with the assumption that the Earth is a spinning ball, and everybody knows it, so don't bother investigating it or questioning it. Thankfully, the truth is a resilient and powerful entity indeed. Once Pandora's box of truth has been opened, so to speak, it simply isn't possible to put the cat of truth back into the bag of deception, as it were. The truth stands firm through all forms of investigation and welcomes all angles of scrutiny. The truth stands up to all skeptical criticism. Deception, on the other hand, which is out of line with reality, and thus guards itself against skeptical analyzation. And what do we see when it comes to the globe Earth? There are definitely entities out there that try to guard the ball earth from skeptical criticism. There are media campaigns and educational curr uh, curriculum designed to program people into defending themselves against the truth, shoving the truth away with both hands due to the fact that fake space and the spinning ball earth have been romanticized in the movies, 
and other modern opinion factories, which go to great lengths to cement the belief in infinite space across all cross-sections of the overall culture by including fake space indoctrination in the various pop culture mechanisms like movies, news, TV shows, fiction novels, etc., etc. The contemporary opinion factories have been very hard at work for generations forcing the belief of infinite space into the minds of the masses at younger and younger ages. Again, if you can convince a person of some lie at a young enough age, really no matter how absurd or ridiculous the lie may be, you can convince that person of pretty much anything for the rest of their lives. Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny would be a perfect case in point, but they are truthfully nowhere near as fantastical as the globe earth theory. And of course, luckily at some point, our parents tell us that Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny is a bunch of malarkey. Unfortunately, nobody ever told them that the spinning ball earth was a bunch of malarkey, and in fact we have NASA telling them that it is the truth. Uh, really, there's so much evidence to support the flat earth reality, physical evidence which conclusively proves the truth without any doubt. The heliocentric theory is so obnoxiously absurd, it's really quite a wonder that they were able to convince the entire world that it is not only true, but so far beyond obvious that ah, it's not even worth investigating. In fact, anyone who even investigates the ball earth theory skeptically must be stupid or crazy, because they certainly don't understand science, and everyone knows the earth is a spinning ball, right? What's so ironic is that the essence of science involves skeptically questioning reality and critically examining our surroundings in order to come closer to the truth. Science certainly doesn't reject any path of inquiry for philosophical or cultural pressure. Science is supposed to disregard philosophical or emotional preference with a cold and calculating meticulousness which divorces the observer or the scientist from his or her worldview in order to glean the truth, even if it makes us uncomfortable, even if it goes against our philosophical belief system, even if it, quite frankly, scares us. This is why Hollywood, or hella weird, has been so instrumental in really cementing the ball earth nonsense within the minds of very intelligent, successful, and utterly misled people. Although the ball earth lies have been successfully installed into practically everyone by the time of adolescence, if a person has a vicarious crush on, say, Princess Leia, for random example, it is, in most cases, more difficult to dissolve the infinite space delusion as there are carefully planted and nurtured subconscious connections between the observer and fictional characters in a movie, a show, or book. We're taught to ignore and attack anyone questioning, or dare say assaulting, the unquestionable and unassailable axioms of the ball earth theory. Once a person is presented with flat earth information and realizes that it is our civic duty as rational beings to actually question our paradigm sometimes, specifically the fake space paradigm, at that point a person has a choice. They can either scoff at the notion and continue to ignore the mountainous preponderance of evidence which supports the static plane truth, or they can investigate flat earth which really means to skeptically and logically scrutinize the said axioms which were forced upon us as toddlers. Such an investigation must involve abandoning the old paradigm, if only temporarily and for argument's sake, in order to establish whether or not there's something to this whole flat earth thing. In doing so, we can only come closer to the truth one way or the other either via the process of elimination, wherein the new way of thinking proves to be a waste of time, or that it yields a new, more logical and ultimately acceptable explanation of the natural world around us. Either we are standing upon spaceship Earth, zipping along the curve of the Earth faster than the speed of sound, flying through space along multiple curvilinear orbital paths, and ultimately traveling in like five different directions at once, with exactly zero supporting physical evidence ever found, or the Earth is fixed, just as it appears. Since the Earth is inarguably a perfectly fixed frame of reference, 
the notion that it is in fact at rest is somehow presented as kooky or wild or anti-scientific. Finally, not only the Judeo-Christian Bible, but the Torah and the Quran and Vedic cosmology, as well as the Mayas and the Chinese of ancient times, their traditions also describe the world as fixed and immovable, wherein the world is the centerpiece of the universe and is of unique and singular importance. The concept that the world is merely an insignificant speck of dust flying around the endless cosmos is in fact a grand deception designed to confound people in our underlying belief system and in our underlying understanding of nature really, which severs our connection to the most high creator of all things visible and invisible, God. The ball earth theory is, in my opinion, a deception which demoralizes and belittles the human experience, thus severing our relationship with our very creator, replacing God with chaos and random chance, which is allegedly responsible for everything from the Big Bang to evolution and really everything in between. God has left his signature everywhere in reality, but our society has created a situation where people have eyes but do not see, they have ears but do not hear, and they have tongues which produce no coherent thought and instead just babble. Since I believe we are clearly living in the days of revelation or the outpouring of knowledge from on high, there is a spiritual thrust towards truth, love, and ultimately logic and order which is sorely needed in this wild, crazy, and misguided world. So thanks so much for watching everybody. This has been The Morgyle. If you would like to help this channel continue, please consider becoming a channel supporter either through PayPal or Cash App or Venmo. I'll put links to all the avenues of supporting in the description box below. Also Patreon if you'd like to do monthly supporting. Um, it is not obligatory, however it is most needed and appreciated. Uh, thanks so much for watching you guys. I uh, love y'all. Uh, be on the lookout for new content coming up real soon. And as always, uh, spread the word, spread the world, and peace out everybody. Take care.